Hello and welcome. Thank you to the AIUM for providing this virtual platform for presentation. This is Andrew Ross. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. I'd like to say thank you to all my co-investigators, including collaborators from University of Utah and University of Colorado. Our presentation is on ultrasound-guided aspiration of the temporomandibular joint, and we're going to present the results in a case series of patients and also discuss imaging findings and procedural technique. The TMJ is a complex joint. Normal function is critical for mastication, for speech. The range of motion is both a hinge and an anterior to posterior gliding motion. And infection of the joint, TMJ septic arthritis is quite rare, but can be very, very serious with high morbidity. Specifically, progression to secondary osteoarthritis is common, even with appropriate treatment. Infection can result from direct spread, if there's been recent instrumentation or surgery, or from hematogenous seeding, particularly in the presence of risk factors, which we'll discuss along with our patient cohort. Presenting clinically, patients usually have trismus, localized pain, swelling, Workup can include cross-sectional imaging, such as contrast-enhanced CT or MRI. This can play a critical role to confirm the presence of a TMJ effusion, to look for deeper spread of infection, including abscess formation, bony involvement, such as osteomyelitis, as well as evaluating for other potential causes of these symptoms. When septic arthritis is suspected, though, aspiration is critical, both to confirm the diagnosis and provide culture data to guide ongoing antibiotic therapy. Unfortunately, even with prompt treatment, osteoarthritis can be a common down the road outcome of cases of TMJ septic arthritis. Our investigation was a retrospective study. We did a structured search of the electronic health record over this time period to identify all patients who had undergone an ultrasound guided temporomandibular joint aspiration. We Put together the demographics, risk factors, culture results, treatment and outcomes for this cohort of patients. And in addition, a literature review was performed to review the anatomy, ultrasound guided scanning and aspiration technique. And we'll provide a series of cases with correlative imaging showing CT and MRI findings as well. We identified six patients over the course of the study time period who had undergone ultrasound guided aspiration for suspected TMJ infection. Age generally skewed older with a range of 46 to 85, a mean of age 65. The cohort was evenly split between males and females. And when we look at risk factors, we'll see that two of these six patients were under immunosuppression for prior transplants. Three patients had type 2 diabetes, and one of the six patients had undergone a recent dental procedure. All of the patients underwent successful aspiration with retrieval of joint fluid, and when we look at the culture data, four of the six patients were culture positive with the range of bacteria shown here, including Pseudomonas, MRSA, P. acnes, and Strep anginosis species. For treatment, none of the patients went to surgery. All of them were treated with antibiotics. And when we look at outcomes, findings are mixed. One patient died at two months from the index procedure. This was from sepsis from an other infection. Several of the patients cleared their infections successfully, although progression to osteoarthritis during the follow-up time period was common. One patient was only briefly treated with antibiotics and when culture was negative, was treated with steroids instead with a presumptive diagnosis of graft-versus-host disease-related arthritis with clinical resolution of symptoms. I'll now show you a couple of example cases. We'll start with this 85-year-old woman, type 2 diabetes, who presented clinically with right-sided TMJ symptoms, including pain as well as trismus. And you can see on contrast-enhanced CT in both the axial and coronal plane, that there is a right-sided temporomandibular joint effusion. The synovium is thickened and enhancing. And on short-axis ultrasound, on the image on the far right, we can see the echogenic mandibular condyle indicated by the asterisk, surrounded by the hypochoic joint effusion indicated by the orange arrows. 
This patient underwent aspiration, yielding 1.5 milliliters of fluid that was positive on culture for methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. Here's another case, this time of a 53-year-old man who'd had a recent dental extraction and presented with subsequent jaw pain. In image A, we can see a coronal contrast-enhanced CT view demonstrating similar findings with this time a left-sided temporomandibular joint effusion with the same synovial thickening and enhancement. In image B, we have bone windows in the sagittal plane and we can see that there's no bone erosion or other evidence of bone involvement. And the sagittal plane soft tissue windows again show the low density joint effusion with thickening and enhancement of the joint synovium. And a similar appearance on ultrasound to the first case, short axis diagnostic ultrasound, again identifying that bony landmark of the mandibular condyle indicated by the asterisk with a surrounding hypoechoic effusion. Aspiration in this case yielded two milliliters of fluid, which was positive for Pseudomonas aeruginosa on culture. One more case, this time of a 70-year-old woman who'd had a history of bone marrow transplant, consequently on ongoing immunosuppression, presented with jaw pain. In image A, we have a sagittal T2 fat suppressed MRI image showing a small amount of joint fluid in the right temporomandibular joint. We can see a similar appearance to the prior cases on the contrast enhanced CT image B in the axial plane with a small joint effusion. Image C shows images taken during ultrasound guided aspiration. Again, we can see the mandibular condyle indicated by the asterisk with the surrounding hypochoic joint effusion, and we can see a needle approaching from anterior to posterior indicated by the arrows. Aspiration in this case yielded 1.5 milliliters of fluid, which had an elevated white blood cell count, but was culture negative. The patient was briefly treated presumptively with antibiotics but was given a diagnosis clinically of graft-versus-host disease-related arthritis and was treated for this with steroids with clinical resolution of symptoms. When we look at ultrasound scanning technique, knowledge of the anatomy is important but fairly straightforward with good surface landmarks to reference placement of the probe. Typically, we will start with the probe in axial orientation to the head parallel to the palpable zygomatic arch, and then moving the probe slightly posterior and slightly inferior will bring the echogenic mandibular condyle into view. So that short axis technique is shown in image A with a correlative ultrasound image down below in image C. So we can see the normal echogenic appearance of the mandibular condyle with the surrounding thin hypoechoic joint capsule in this normal patient. The other Orthogonal view will be with the probe in coronal orientation to the head or long axis and simply turning 90 degrees will get you this view with similar appearance uh, of the ultrasound image shown below in image D. Typically we'll use the hockey stick style high frequency probe which is easily maneuvered through this region um, and also works well for guidance during aspiration, but any high-frequency probe uh, will work fine. For aspiration technique, there's different ways of approaching this, but at our institution, we'll usually use short axis position of the probe, the needle approaching in plane from an anterior to posterior approach. So that would be a probe position similar to that seen in image A. And you can see the needle in our illustration in image B is going to approach in long axis, targeting the apex of the mandibular condyle, which provides a nice bony backstop for the needle to stop at. And we'll put the tip of the needle intraarticular where aspiration can be performed. In our case series of six patients, joint fluid was successfully retrieved in every instance. Uh, if joint fluid cannot be retrieved, then a saline lavage can be performed um, with the saline aspirated back out to provide a sample for culture. No complications were observed from the procedure in our group of six patients, and complications are rare in the literature. Ultrasound, of course, can identify any adjacent neurovascular structures, which can then be 
avoided. So in conclusion, TMJ septic arthritis, although rare, is a serious condition requiring prompt treatment to minimize chance of ongoing morbidity, specifically the development of secondary osteoarthritis. When the diagnosis is suspected, joint aspiration is critical, both to confirm the diagnosis and provide accurate culture data to guide ongoing antibiotic treatment. Cross-sectional imaging also plays a role and is often obtained before joint aspiration to help assess for the presence of a temporomandibular joint effusion and look for any potential complications of infection, deep abscess formation, osteomyelitis, as well as assess for other causes of symptoms. Ultrasound is an ideal imaging modality for image guidance during aspiration, and the technique is fairly straightforward, providing you have a good understanding of the underlying temporomandibular joint anatomy and familiarity with the keys of proper ultrasound-guided aspiration technique fundamental to aspiration at any site. Thank you very much for your attention, and please feel free to ask me if you have any questions.